Do you want to know how to start the ketogenic diet? How to get into ketosis and start burning your own body fat for fuel? Yes! How to have a lot of energy and mental clarity for the entire day? Lee, I got this! That's the beauty of ketosis and the ketogenic diet. Zero to nigga, real quick. Welcome to the channel, my name is Seem, and in this video, I'm going to explain you how to start the ketogenic diet step by step. It's a complete beginner's guide. You ain't gonna see it coming. If you want to know how to optimize and improve your body and mind, then make sure you subscribe because my videos cover exactly those topics. But now, let's start with some of the basics of your metabolism. You ain't gonna see it coming, come on, learn. So, your body can use different fuel sources for energy. Glucose is the molecule of carbohydrates and it gets stored in the body as glycogen. Fatty acids can be found in dietary fat and you either burn them off as energy or store them in the adipose tissue. Protein consists of amino acids that are essential building blocks for your body. But protein itself can't be stored inside the body. You only need a certain amount of protein per day for maintaining muscle mass. And what you don't need right away has to be converted to glucose before you can store it. Converting protein to glucose is a whole nother topic, but it's quite relevant when trying to maintain ketosis. It won't happen by eating too much protein. It happens when your body actually feels the need to do it. Gluconeogenesis is driven by demand, not by supply. All excess calories, whether that be from carbohydrates or fat, get converted into triglycerides and they're stored in your adipose tissue for backup. If you're in a caloric deficit, you'll take those same triglycerides and burn them for energy. It doesn't matter what type of food you eat, if you eat too much calories, then they will still end up as triglycerides in your adipose tissue. 48% body fat. By default, your body is using glucose for fuel because it's quick to absorb and easy to store as fat. When you're in a fasted state or when you reduce your carbohydrate intake, then you will eventually deplete your liver glycogen. The liver will then start producing ketone bodies from stored triglycerides. Those same stored triglycerides in your body fat. Which leads us to ketosis. In a nutshell, ketosis is a metabolic state in which your body has shifted from using glucose as its primary fuel source into supplying its energy demands with ketone bodies. You can induce ketosis by fasting for either 3 days or restricting your carbohydrate intake for a few weeks. Ketogenesis involves the creation of ketone bodies such as acetoacetate that gets converted into acetone and beta-hydroxybutyrate. Help! I'm in a nutshell! That sounds like a very difficult process. You know, why would you even want to get into ketosis? Because it's awesome. There are many benefits to this state. Ketones produce 25% more energy than glucose. Glucose metabolism causes more oxidative stress and free radical production, which can speed up aging and cause damage to the mitochondria. The ketogenic diet mimics the physiology of fasting, which makes it superior for blood sugar and insulin stabilization. It's easier to burn fat and lose weight on keto. Your energy levels throughout the day are constant and you won't experience the ups and downs of insulin. You will also experience improved endurance and physical performance thanks to burning your own body fat for fuel. The ketogenic diet has a lot of positive benefits on your health such as higher HDL cholesterol, lower triglycerides and reduced inflammation. You'll have greater mental clarity and clearer thinking because your brain has access to energy 24-7. And you'll have reduced hunger at the expense of increased satiety, which makes it again extremely good for weight loss and improved cognition. Die calories, die! I myself have done the ketogenic diet for three years and I must say that it has drastically increase the quality of my life, starting from my physical performance, my cognition, my mood, my energy levels and my productivity. It's a lot easier to stay focused on something for longer periods of time without getting sidetracked or getting hungry. It's been great for building muscle and improving my physical performance at the gym as well. And of course it's very easy to maintain a lean physique year round. If you're at a caloric deficit on the ketogenic diet, then those missing calories will be taken straight from your body fat. 
on a non-ketogenic diet that doesn't restrict carbohydrates, you will experience slightly higher rates of muscle loss at the caloric deficit. The reason is that your body is still geared towards burning glucose and when you run out of glucose inside the body, then you will start to convert your protein into glucose through gluconeogenesis. This is the point where gluconeogenesis is driven by demand, not supply. Your body needs some energy and the next best thing after glucose is protein. First time in my life I'm pissed off! But this doesn't happen on a keto diet because your body is using fat as its primary fuel source. Wow, sounds amazing, right? But it might be too complicated for some people. Don't worry, it's not actually that hard. The foods eaten on a ketogenic diet may seem somewhat restrictive, but actually that positive restriction gives you a lot more freedom. And they may take our lives! You eat only low carb foods, green leafy vegetables, some meats, eggs, fish, chicken, a little bit of dairy, some nuts and a lot of healthy fats like olive oil, butter, coconut oil, avocados and seeds. You don't want to eat high carb foods, grains, sugar, legumes, fruits, starchy tubers, potatoes, trans fats, vegetable oils and processed meats. There are also some miscellaneous foods like bone broth, pickles, fermented foods, sauerkraut and mustard. But you can't expect to get into ketosis by just eating those foods. You also have to eat them in the right amounts. What makes a diet ketogenic isn't the foods that you eat, but the low amount of carbohydrates and the other macronutrients. The standard ketogenic diet macros are said to be around 5-10% to carbohydrates or 30 to 50 grams net, 15 to 30 percent protein, which is about 0.6 to 1.0 grams per pound of lean body mass, and the rest of your calories, about 60 to 80 percent, should come from fat. You have to understand that these are just numbers. Your body doesn't have its own keto calculator. The liver just starts calculating how many grams of protein or fat you ate. The lower your carb intake, the faster you will start producing ketones. The more physically active you are, the more insulin sensitive you are. How many calories and macros you should eat depend a lot on your individual condition, but these percentages are simply some good guidelines. Someday you might need some more carbohydrates, at, while at others you need more fat. It's a constant process of adaptation. Keep looking shocked and move slowly towards the cake. So how do you know if you've made it to the promised land and I've seen that you got into ketosis? The promised land. To know if you're in ketosis, you can measure your blood ketones using blood ketometers. Nutritional ketosis begins when your blood ketones are above 0.5 millimoles. The optimal zone is said to be around 0.5 to 3.0 millimoles. Above 3.0 millimoles indicates starvation ketosis and means you might be in a caloric deficit. It's not dangerous but it may have some negative side effects. Ketoacidosis occurs at 8 or above millimoles which causes dangerous blood acidity. It won't occur on a ketogenic diet but with severe alcohol poisoning or on people with type 1 diabetes. There are also some symptoms of ketosis. You get a dry mouth and you may become more thirsty. You will experience water weight loss and increased urination. Lack of appetite and reduced hunger. Increased energy and focus. And of course, the keto breath. It's this metallic and fruity taste in your mouth. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. You may also experience the keto flu. The keto flu is basically some withdrawal symptoms from carbohydrates. Headaches, dizziness, fatigue, lethargy, brain fog and poor performance at the gym. Now wait a minute. What is this thing? I thought ketosis was amazing. What's going on here? I thought you just had energy all the time. Oh bullshit! Yes, it's true that the initial periods of keto adaptation can be quite difficult because your body is going through an energy crisis. Think about it, you're living in a modern world, you're used to eating several times per day and you don't have the reference experience of using your own body fat for fuel. Evolutionarily, ketosis is our survival mechanism for going through periods of famine. But in the modern world, we rarely tap into our fat burning pathways, which is one of the biggest reasons why you would want to do the ketogenic diet at least once to reignite these pathways in your metabolism. The reason you get the keto flu is that you're losing a lot of electrolytes. Add more sodium to your foods 
drink bone broth, bouillon cubes or pickle juices. Take some supplements for magnesium, potassium and vitamin D. Reduce your overall stress levels. Get more sleep and during the adaptation phase, train less intensely and focus on building up your fat burning engine. All of it. Usually it takes about two to three weeks to become adequately keto adapted to really notice some of the differences. But it still depends on how your body individually reacts to carbohydrates. For me, it took about a week to notice that my body started to use fat more efficiently. Some people might feel amazing from the get-go, you lucky bastards. For others, it may take up to several months. If you're coming off a high-carb diet, then it's inevitably going to take a longer time to adapt than for someone who has been eating a paleo-type diet for a while now. What about some of the common mistakes? Eating too many carbs. They either have some hidden sugars in their food lurking around or they just simply eat too many carbohydrates. Low levels of insulin and blood sugar are the key to a ketogenic diet. Not enough fats. You need a substitute for glucose to give your body some energy. Not enough micronutrients. Magnesium, potassium, calcium, vitamin D3 or omega-3s, they are needed for successfully doing any diet. And one of the biggest mistakes is eating the wrong foods, like unhealthy fats, overcooking meats or heating oils. Most importantly, you need a lot of patience and commitment to do the ketogenic diet as a long-term thing. The benefits of proper keto adaptation, they begin to emerge only after a few months. After years of doing the ketogenic diet, I still notice some new aspects to this ketosis thing. Like I can go for longer periods without food and my physical performance is still functioning as if I'm consuming carbohydrates. The longer you do the ketogenic diet, the better your body becomes at burning fat. That's why I highly encourage you to try it out at least once and not only so that you could see how having constantly high levels of energy feels like but to also engrave these fat burning pathways into your metabolism. But if you want to get the step-by-step -step guide to starting the ketogenic diet then I highly recommend you my simple keto video course. I'll leave a discount code in the description. But other than that, click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. Like always, my name is Seem. Stay ketotic, stay empowered.